Hello, everyone. I'm Deep Mehdi. I'm the organizer of SKC Science and Technology webinar series. Uh, today, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Rajiv Chilka of uh, Green Gold Animation. He is uh, uh, very well known uh, for the work he has been doing in India for the last uh, 20 years uh, when he started this company. And one of the very well-known characters he created is known as Chota Vim. Uh, many of you have seen it. Uh, many of you probably grew up with it, actually, who are attending to this uh, thing. And I know him for a long time, uh, probably about 25 years, uh, Rajiv, right? And yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so it's my great pleasure to invite Rajiv and uh, uh, talk about what he has created. Uh, and I call him India's Disney, obviously. So take care, Rajiv. Thank you so much, uh, Deep. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. I think uh, today I'm trying to going going to try and talk about a little bit of creation process using technology. So the technology that is used uh, to create animations that we see today, uh, whether be it on television, OTT platforms, or uh, or the films. So I mean, in the last two decades. You know, animation has come a long way. Technologies have changed and you have to be fast upgrading yourself, your systems, your graphic cards, your softwares. A lot has changed, you know, and but still an artist's creative, uh, creativity is not yet taken away. The tools are basically enhancing. So today I'm just going to be talking about that. Uh, before that... Right, I think my screen is, yeah, all right. So yeah, so uh, before that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about myself. I mean, uh, I have a background, so I did my master's in UMKC, came back to India, started Green Gold Animation towards the end of 2000. So around 2001, where my journey started into animation. The reason I came to India, uh, at that time, there was just one kid's channel in India. And the reason I came here is I figured that uh, a lot of stories are still to be told in India. I mean, till in 2001, there was not even a single uh, animated show that was created out of India. So one of my goals was, I think we need to see new series or a new show or a new character that was going to be created out of India. And I was hoping that it would travel beyond India. So I think the best way to always show one country's culture or you know art or architecture is always the best way is through in a medium of media, which is could be a form of film or an animated show or uh, or even a, a regular live action film. Uh, so so when we started back in 2001, we were very clear that we want to uh, go on and become a product company. So as an animation company, we had a choice. A, we can be a service-oriented studio, which is an easier path to take, or B, take a tougher path, create your own show, and create a market which did not exist in India back then. So from, like, from 2001 to 2004, our company went from... Uh, from Green Gold being a, a, a proprietary concern to a private limited con concern. So people in India would understand what's a private limited is. So more corporate way we became in 2004. So prior to the, uh, that, we were running a small shop. We had a, we started with about four people. And then in 2004, we were about uh, 14 or 15. But then we changed the structure. We started just focusing on animation and things started changing for us very quickly. So. Uh, Today, currently, Rajiv, uh, from, if I may ask you a quick question, uh, if you could quickly tell us what made you go into animation? Uh, yeah, I mean, to be very honest, uh, that one, I realized, you know, software programming was not my cup of tea. I, I like networking better, uh, networking and telecom better over software, but I realized mm -hmm. it didn't keep me motivated in the sense I realized that I was actually slacking, whether I was in my job or in the school. 
something did not hold me and i was somewhere not really uh, i i don't think i was i was not a confident person in the sense that was in my thing so that's what something i realized mm-hmm. but when i touched the subject of animation i realized i could work hard from 8 in the morning to 2 in the night and i'm still fresh Very so good. that's where i felt you know this is my calling and one thing is like i'm a creative person who understands technology so i feel i'm best suited for something like this because animation brings together technology as well as creativity and i felt i was best suited and coming from computers background i did not have the fear of using technology for animation so that was a big plus so okay. uh, very good thank yeah. you mm-hmm. go ahead so uh, so so we have come a long way from you know from employing about four people in 2001 to about 20 people in 2004 and today we are employing pretty much about 900 people and most of these are across india and a few uh, about uh, about a dozen in the us uh, are working uh, uh, with us so we've come a long way from uh, from that and we have produced today uh, over 30000 minutes of uh, content which is the content that we own besides that we have also produced service content that is content we work with for other partners such as nickelodeon and so on so uh, so uh, i mean a turning point in our company came with the creation of our uh, uh, third i fourth ip rather ip is intellectual property not uh, internet protocol so uh, in our uh, in our world so uh, so in intellectual property terms the fourth project that we created was chota beam and it was a runaway hit and everything changed for us from there onwards and from there there was no looking back and this debuted on television on april 6 2008 and from there everything changed for us right from creation of uh, merchandise to more properties and so on so from uh, from being a small studio to a 2d animation studio and then from from beam it went on uh, uh it we, we started to do beam in 2d animation i'll later on explain what 2d are from there to today we have even uh, we are the first country first company out of asia to sign a netflix original uh, for kids which we uh, feel proud first company in india to do a, a netflix original in kids and uh, we uh, we awesome. feel very very proud that we have uh, come such a long way so today we have like one more our... question rajiv for you uh, uh, that question is about chota bhim is your most beloved character and uh, what made you to create that character unless you're so, going to talk uh, about that later that's fine so i will i'll be talking uh, about that but i would love to talk about it here mm-hmm. this may be a good point uh, to talk about so uh, uh, so bhim so as a kid as growing up in india i've grown up watching mythology shows you know <laughs> shows uh, which uh, so mythology means i mean india has so many stories and one of the the most popular epics are ramayana and mahabharata and bhim is a character out of mahabharata and uh, so bhim is a strong extremely strong warrior prince and i i was fascinated by his character i always wanted to be like that but i couldn't be so in real life i couldn't be then i thought why not uh, create a character that can do that and also i realized that uh, in order to boys as as kids you know strength is something that always fascinates boys you know like you know as, especially young kids you know i've seen my nephew and niece in my house you know the parents are struggling to feed them food and uh, the i mean so they always need a role model hey look at this guy you know how strong if you want to be strong you have to eat so we felt okay if you create a show where we are promoting eating also as especially in india uh, there is a lot of mal- malnutrition and stuff especially in the I mean, you know low middle class or the poor, poor uh, population of india so we felt we have to sung there people have to know that if you have to be strong and healthy you have to eat the right food and stuff so that was one of the uh, reasons why we uh, we i created beam and i now also felt so instead of creating a brand new uh, a brand new uh, character which no one can 
associate with i thought it will be good to create an a character which people already are aware of and bhim is a character so when bhim came on screen first time everyone thought it was a uh, it, it it was a mythology story we are telling but they were all surprised to see that this is uh, just a character whose name is uh, bhim and is inspired from the mythology of bhim so that was a turning point and thanks to mm -hmm. bhim like what you see in the screen here we've been able to create so many companies so many studios some studios in kolkata some in rajmundry uh, one in us and uh, merchandise you know we have a factory that produces toys especially we saw that a lot of things are changing over the world and uh, we we and india also is getting into manufacturing so we thought we start manufacturing our own soft toys rather than wait 3 months to get a shipment from china and we started doing that so we produced today about 20000 toys uh, in this thing and just to name like we have as a company being being based out of hyderabad india we have worked with who's who in the entertainment field the top companies in the world including netflix or amazon prime or disney or cartoon network or nickelodeon so we work with everyone so we we we, we i mean that was a dream so when we started the company it was a dream for me that hey first i have to get on to cartoon network so every time we set goals and then of course and now netflix was the ultimate goal earlier and to have a netflix original which we did with mighty little beam so here are some of the shows that we created some of them in 2d 2d is basically two dimensional shows and then 3d is three dimensional these are some of the shows that we created besides this there are almost about 10 or 12 more shows uh which that which we have created but i i mean i'm not going to go in that direction uh because today i mean i'm going to talk a little bit more about technology of animation i think all of you kind of know a lot about animation so i i would understand you know animation is nothing but you know still images that are moving you know that the same principle that a movie camera or any camera that works today uh, any video camera so basically it captures still images and it plays them in in real time or in a second 25 frames or based on which part of the world you are 20, 24 to 30 frames a second usually the camera captures uh, based on the thing and then it plays the pictures in sequence and uh, so that's how usually the first animation creations were made so the, here is a disc that you see and the drawings were made and uh, people have studied animals to human beings and etc to study the movements and uh, uh, study the movements and recreate them in on paper and pencil and of course there was a lot of evolution has happened so earlier days there was no computers so it was all about paper so first you had to draw each so there was something called cell animation which was like you used to draw on a paper on a single white paper and you so each frame you draw so initially they used to draw the background and foreground together so example in a second there are about 20 uh, 24 frames this is for film i'll keep that as a reference for the thing so example so when there are 24 frames you have to create at least 12 frames in order for you to uh, in order for you to create some illusion that the drawings are moving so uh, so if you take example human eye why 12 frames i'll explain because usually human eye can cannot detect anything which is slower than 10 frames a second you know we cannot tell that uh, we cannot read that so hence animation uses that and we we don't draw 24 frames but we do uh, draw 12 frames and then we repeat each frame for two frames so that it's 12 into 2 24 frames and that's how it done so the first initial animation you had to draw the background you had to draw the foreground and slowly then they invented the light light bulb and uh, the uh, so there there is a traditional animation board on which you draw and there is a light uh, so the light behind the drawing desk and you basically then they started separating the background and foreground so you didn't have to draw the background but you still had to draw the foreground so this was the initial process and majorly the artist it used to take years to complete projects the drawing was i mean the number of drawings that you had to create were were crazy so from from there on i think 
from 2D then in the 90s we saw came 3 3D which is now more it is called as CGI which which is computer generated imagery uh, uh, so uh, so using CGI it becomes much more easier actually to create uh, uh, to create a, 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 a animation and stuff but technology wise the computers extra stuff have to have you know high end computers have to come in so in this uh, process in this uh, slide what do you see here is basically a simple 2d animation process so certain things are common for both 2d animation as well as 3d or cgi animation it is uh, uh, so the first first pre production part it is common so what do you see uh, on on the slide here from the idea to scripting to storyboarding to animatic and design all this is still done today on paper uh and it is drawn either into the computer is hand drawn still but you are drawing into computer today the storyboard and design part uh as earlier days you were actually drawing to paper so post that then comes the production part so in 2d you are still continue to draw and the backgrounds and everything but using technology the number of drawings that you are drawing is much lesser today as compared to the earlier thing and then once your background and foreground and animation is done you com you combine everything and that is post production where your pictures come together and you compose it the background foreground effects any if, if there are any effects i'll talk about effects later on and uh, that's you finally may edit your video and that is your 2d animation process and now a little one bit on one question rajiv here yeah. the scripting is basically where you are you are talking about the writers writing the stories you know i i know you used to write yourself some of the stories you know the very early days right if i remember and uh, that you got uh, you know different sort of scripts going on storyline and i presume when you go from a scripting to storyboarding where you kind of do this you know uh, set of pictures to start with at uh, the at the at the beginning obviously sometimes the script might change or the storyline might change does it happen and how much time do you spend between those two stages usually for a particular story yeah so uh, great question uh, deep so so in scripting yes you're absolutely right uh, in initial part of the company i used to write the thing that we found lesser writers who could write for animation or understand kids but today there's plenty of talented writers i mm -hmm. do still write once in a while though uh, the new concepts and stuff but yes during the process of creation many times a lot of these things change mm -hmm. and uh, so to uh, to kind of avoid that doing at a later stage uh, we create animatic so animatic is basically you draw the storyboards that is basically panels like in comic and we see animatic is basically playing those comics those uh, single visuals in uh, in a uh, in sequence so you can actually time and know what is the exact time of this story is going to come to and if you are short you add some shots if the length is longer than what you desire then you trim down some shots so usually the animatic will give us a good idea of if your story is working or not but many a times even uh, you know uh, even at a later stage when everything is done we realize oh we we made some mistake and we go back to step 1 and we do some fix ups okay so in mm -hmm. in 2d animation typically a time taken from uh, idea to the end product is usually about 3 months and for for an episode with like almost about about 80 to 100 people working on an episode that usually takes about uh, four months, and of course everyone. Oh, I'm, talking overall, I'm talking about the overall timeline, but actual timeline is usually one week in each department, one week to week to ten days in each department. So going to 3D, a little bit changes after the pre-production. That now everything is computer generated. Your layout to texturing. to modeling to rigging your animation everything is done use, using technology i will i will explain that in uh, in uh, later on uh, in the presentation and probably a few slides later and then when when we are developing so 
for when once we draw the tools uh, the characters in 2d so we take that into uh, softwares like you know autodesk maya <laughs> and we create the character in cgi and then we also using other softwares we actually also texture them texture in the sense basically give a color feel to what is a drawing uh, so here's an example of what you see on the left side of a, a screen here is a uh, first you get a drawing and from that drawing the artist creates a wireframe model uh, in in the software like in this case this character is mighty little beam and is basically a, on netflix and this show uh, the beam's character is modeled in maya and this is a wireframe and then once the wireframe part is done you're happy with the uh, with everything that you see then you basically shade it so in a shaded mode what you see on the left side is basically you see the uh, clean version of the character and once that is done uh, you basically add textures to this wireframe and the shaded mode and texture i mean his shorts his skin tone his hair color his eyes etc and what you get is a color image that's the first basic image that you get and then so you have basically what you see here is a t, t pose this uh, so what the character standing like this is basically a t, a t pose so you create this because at this point he does not have a skeleton inside him so like just like imagining the human body you have to create a skeleton otherwise you can't move the parts so that is what is called as rigging so once the model is created and the basic texturing is done or sometimes that can be done before texturing also so we create uh, joints and controls uh, for the character for examples we give controls for his how to move his legs his hands and uh, basically and there also you define also basically your hand cannot stretch beyond a certain uh, you know, uh, limit same way your legs cannot stretch beyond a certain thing so we said limitation so to give a actual human values we take and we kind of said that and then we are done with basically the movements of the body but then most of the things come out the expression the feelings everything is facial so the face becomes one of the most important uh, important uh, points in when creating a new character so we have to actually create expression so now we have created a face basic face model and now then we create more uh, uh, blend shapes what we called it so we uh, we model the face now again so once the body is made the face we will have anywhere from 8 to 16 expressions in a minimum so we model again now he's smiling his mouth open his uh, his eyes one eye is closed if or normally or he blinks all these kind of expression based on the character and how many times he's appearing in a show we create those expressions so once we feel satisfied with all these processes then there are additional elements so in the case of beam so we do hair and fur simulation so we create uh, hair and then we uh, we kind of uh, uh, test that you know we take, you know we decide you know okay he's a baby do we how much hair do we give so we in fact a baby doesn't have so much of hair usually at this uh, age but we give in a little bit more because you know it's okay to exaggerate in animation and stuff we just wanted mm -hmm. beam to look good and cute and stuff so mm -hmm. again this is one of the complicated parts and this is generally once the artist knows how to do that these are simulations that are done in the software and then again there are many different ways you can uh, uh, control the hair as well you know how if the wind is blowing how do you do the that and uh, similarly in this case the character has no cloth but uh, sometimes the character is wearing uh, cloth then based on his move you can also uh, do those simulations so generally if you see in anime asian they try to avoid free flowing uh, uh, free flowing costumes and stuff like superman kind of character having a robe is a little tricky in animation when you do it in uh, 3d because you have to simulate that stuff in this thing so you'll see those things happening in movies but you don't see it so much in uh, regular tv shows uh, so, so earlier i was talking about the process so in this case i've given an example of 
like how uh, so in case of mighty little beam this is a this is done in using cgi method so i'm going to go through the cgi part so uh, on your left you see the sketches uh, of uh, the actual artist drawing this into the computer uh, using uh, uh, using a tablet he draws into uh, the computer and that image actually is now re after we have created all those so if you see a toy in the background that is drawn hand drawn in the first process then th modeled in 3d and then is imported into this scene so whatever props that you see from the basket to a ball to a piggy bank everything is created and imported into the scene and so we first place the cameras as to what how your camera should look who are the actors in the scene we import them into that scene i'll play a small clip to show you how that happens so this is one of our episodes in mighty little beam so, so called quickly beam. a question rajiv is that when you go from these four things you showed usually how long does it take for a, you know one of your uh, you know tech, uh, technical person to go from the the the, the left top picture to the bottom right picture usually yeah so usually if, when when we are starting a series mm -hmm. so usually we sign for about at least 20 episodes to 45 or 50 episodes so, mm -hmm. so at the beginning of the season before we start production so we write the scripts from the from the scripts we take or oh, what all characters are in the story mm -hmm. we model them and keep them ready mm -hmm. and but when we storyboard, until we storyboard, we don't realize what are the things that you need, I what see. prop you need. Example, okay. he falls into water, or gags are created. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you do miss out, but typically this takes about, uh, the animatic takes about a week. Mm -hmm. The layout, which what you see here, takes about a week. That mm -hmm. is for the, not one shot, but typically there are about uh, 200 shots in a five minute uh, clip. Okay. So, Okay. So it takes about a week typically for that kind of a character. Okay. So yeah. I'll play the mm -hmm. clip here. So, so, so what we do here is basically on your left, you will see the hand drawing and on the right, we actually, uh, we recreate that in 2D. And here in this case, you don't see the characters are not, basically we were just doing the posing. If you see the beam's mom is actually sliding and she's look at this thing. So what we are doing here is we are just placing the characters and timing the whole shot. Here, you don't see any acting or anything. We're placing, basically creating the poses. And that is the first step in layout. That's what we do in layout. Once the director is happy with what he sees, we come to the next step. So from the layout, we create animation. So what we saw there earlier scene was basically uh, uh, just movements and camera and how the camera is looking and stuff. So in, when it comes to the actual shot, now what we do is we animate. We saw the earlier a, a dragonfly come in. Now here we animate the dragonfly. So now Beam was earlier not moving properly. Now Beam's mom is walking. So you see the movements that, uh, what is happening. So example, she. Uh, so we're doing everything as per the layout that we see. So once this is done, mm -hmm. again, the next process, also, there are many things that are possible. So here, what you're not seeing is a textured uh, uh, output. So this is a non-rendered output, what you see. So uh, uh, so this is lighter on the CPU. This is lighter files, easier to share with people. So at this, pro at this stage, when you find any mistakes, it is easier to rectify. Uh, but once you do everything and you find mistakes there, then it becomes difficult. So a lot of mistakes we find in this stage and we eliminate them. So so looks like Rajiv, you do the background later, basically. You are just looking at more the animation part of it. And then, you know, like the walls and everything, what you showed, they are not quite colorized fully yet. Uh, did I get that right? Did you do like a green background sort of a thing when you do this initial part, the animation, where even when you go to the walking part for Vim's mom? Yeah, so basically, uh, Vim, you, there is a background in the drawings you saw, but it is not colored like you right, rightly right. Mm -hmm. uh, But the most important thing here is the flow, usually, or whatever the character is touching and feeling. So if he's walking on the floor, we need to have that already uh, laid out and stuff. Uh, 
so once that part is done, we go to the rendering part. So uh, I mentioned to you earlier, when we design the character or a set, we already keep the, the model, the color one done. And in this stage, which is after the animation is approved, is where we light the sets as per the light. Example, if it is daylight, we light the frames accordingly. If it is night, uh -huh. we light okay. accordingly. Sure. If you're indoors, you light the set accordingly. If you're outdoors, you light it accordingly. And after all this is done, then comes rendering, which I'm going to talk about. So rendering is basically, it's the, again, this is CGI. So this is where the computer does all this, uh, all the, uh, you know, all the simulations or uh, basically it, it will light the scene. It'll record everything from reflections to, uh, you know, if the surface is transparent, the light will pass through. If it is opaque, the light won't pass through. So those kind of calculations, the, the computer will do and computer will pretty much take over. For example, when to, to render, there are certain plugins and tools and stuff. Uh, so if you do it in different, uh, plugin, you get different output. So the so so their earlier one was mental ray. Recent times it's V ray. Now there is Redshift, which is basically GPU based rendering. And then uh, recently Arnold uh, some uh, is another new method. So using these basically, you can tell the look and feel. You mm -hmm. can desire. Okay, this is how I want look. Uh, so if you want example, you're using you want to for example, uh, you want to make sure it is scenes are more colorful and there is water, there is uh, uh, this hair simulation, everything. Then you choose Arnold, which is like the most advanced one. Okay. And you want high quality, then that's what you choose. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at cheaper and faster productions mm -hmm. where you don't, the client says, I need this in 20 days. Can you do mm -hmm. something? Then we choose Red, Redshift because it's almost, rendering is almost real time, although not real time. Mm -hmm. So based on the application, we do choose. So, but uh, on a for a particular uh, you know show or twenty minutes show you make, you stay with one platform or do you mix it up between Autodesk and uh, you know V-Ray that you talk about? So usually, the whole series you do uh, in one use only one method. So, example, okay. if you choose okay. Arnold mm -hmm. for the entire series, so we will do tests mm -hmm. before uh, for the first clip we take it, we do tests and we freeze on the look and feel of the show. We uh, involve the stakeholders, the, if the network, we show it to them, are you happy with this? So we get everyone's consent before we move forward. Uh, so then we stick to that for pretty much the entire season. Sometimes when we see we don't like something in this season, so next season when we do it, we upgrade things, you know? So sometimes, example, if you see Boss Baby, the series, not the, uh, not the movie in season one and two, they did not use hair and uh, fur and those things. But in season three, they've upgraded and they you'll start to see the hair and uh, uh, the cloth and that simulations that they have used. So usually they keep upgrading. So, so as seasons progress, you know, the animation shows also sometimes look better and better. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so in this case, this is one of our movies that we did, and this is just to explain uh, what happens in lighting and compositing and rendering stage. So this is basically, this is a scene where, uh, you know, Beam was about to fall inside lava and the, his friends tried to save him and jump along with the help of rope and all of them together save Beam. And is, uh, and is uh, so it's a climax scene of a movie. And then what you see here is basically uh, the rocks that are lit up like, when there is fire nearby and smoke, fog, everything added to that. So I play this. So I, I play this video clip for you guys to understand like what process, how it adds. So we are adding here, you know, lighting, rendering. Uh, so effects uh, like the blue lights here in this scene are effects, and then all put together are composited, and then we add a little bit of fog to give a feel of that this is real. And uh, so there are a lot of layers, as you can see, when we are creating a scene. And it's, I mean, this this is so addictive, actually, when you're working on this. I mean, you can, I mean, it's so hard to kind of 
create a perfect scene and then i mean as creative people actually you'll never be satisfied with anything that you create and you realize you're sometimes embarrassed to show what you have done 2 years ago uh, so, <laughs> right mm-hmm. yeah. so it keeps constantly changing so right. uh, mm-hmm. but it is a process that technology is making it easier and easier uh, for us to uh, uh, keeping get a, getting better and better one more question yeah. here rajiv yeah. so before you yeah. move to the next thing yeah. so what that i really like that clip you showed about how to you do different things so within your team how does it work for example somebody creates this thing do you do a, a sounding off with uh, two three other people to say how they feel or how do you kind of uh, could do the collaborative part of that work to say that you know you know we, we got this right you know people have and as an artistic way of looking at it all of us have a different way to visualize something said oh you you have some kind of a, i won't say fighting but you know bring your own perspective perspective to something how do you resolve that and how do you work through that actually yeah so uh, so overall we have so from the step 1 to step the last step there are almost like usual and typical animation production there are about 200 people who touch the shots so it really it's i mean you what what you said is a very important aspect of it to maintain the same look and feel throughout the show same time visualize the way the director is seeing the show so at the beginning of uh, the creation process what we also do is while we creating uh, so we create concept art so like earlier frame you saw uh, the frame where the 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 kids were falling into the lava and so we create that in 2d first so we hand drawn painted in a photoshop we create that visual imagery and then giving it to the cgi experts hey light this up and show us how it look and then once they light it up and then see the director sees he gives more inputs like hey why well, i think this since there is so much fire why don't you add some uh, you know some kind of a uh, uh, fumes coming out of the thing so the additions like you mentioned mm-hmm. you know they mm-hmm. getting added and added okay. and that part uh, again sometimes you never you cannot sometimes visualize the whole thing so it's the director's job the creative director's job the art director's job to kind of visualize that and hand hold the other artist throughout the series uh, so uh, so one of the other important things of the production is the visual effects so visual effects basically is a part of everything that is being created today out there about 10 years ago there were still films that being made without using vfx but today there is not even a single film be it or a single uh, thing that is shot uh, 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 that doesn't get processed through vfx so in mm-hmm. vfx basically we do so many things we do we could add a lot of things including your color corrections to how the look and you make your sky bluer make add some really pretty clouds or you know is there fire in the background we missed in the shoot can we add fire in the background those kind of things i mean today every, i mean almost most waterfalls or that you see in shoots or in animated all they are all created uh, in vfx software like houdini and stuff so these are some visuals in the same film i was talking about kung, uh, kung fu the maka of chota bhim so here the fire the water the waterfalls everything are uh what you see is the clouds the water sprinkling the rain that is falling uh the uh, the the lightning uh that is accompanying the rain the water bouncing off uh the, you know the horse or uh, the guys who are fighting in this case the waterfall uh so almost trying to create this thing but this is animation so we kind of give more brighter and cooler mm-hmm. nice colors make sure it is pleasing to the children and stuff right. but when mm-hmm. when if this is a horror film the lighting will be done completely differently that's correct uh, and yeah to make it scarier and stuff like that so no, that, uh, rajib that uh, as you showed through this clip now that you have made this thing for 15 20 years now have you gone back and said that oh i wanted to go recreate this show again uh because the technology is so much better to do what you have done you know 20 years back 
have you thought about it or is it uh, too much of work or is it not worth it you know just curious rather yeah so you're absolutely right and i mean i'm i'm pretty embarrassed at what we did to in 2004 5 so uh, so what we are doing is kind of some of the shows like what we done we are taking it pan and planning to recreate so then we realize hey this is okay we we got everything wrong back then from storytelling to how it looks and stuff based on the budgets available to us back then so right uh, in our case like luckily we got a chance to do something like that so when in 2006 when we created actually chota beam so we had really uh, created that with peanut budget and in 2017 uh, when we had a chance to recreate basically the uh, mighty uh, beam in basically as in a different avatar though in a baby avatar mighty little beam so we have suddenly have you know whatever money we asked for netflix was willing to uh, pay for that so we budget was no more a constraint mm -hmm. but creation so we, we we were very happy that we got a chance to recreate dolapur which is the locations where it happens we we had a chance to recreate the characters in the show i mean make them more cuter more bubbly more expressive and all those kind of things uh, and using cgi the technology that is available now uh, uh, to kind of do that so yes uh, there are still many more that we actually want to create that we have created in the past very good so uh, go ahead please moving on to the next slide so this is typically like when you make a feature film usually a typical life cycle of making a feature film from the beginning to the end is usually four to uh, four to i mean as can take sometimes longer also in this case for us we we took us almost five years not that we did uh, did everything i mean we were not working on it day and night but there were breaks in production we realized oh this is not working let's recreate or let's change the story so many times that happens and so in in case of this film over like at any given point, there were about 100 to 120 people working on the set and uh, were working on the uh, on the movie. And there were almost like 74,000 storyboard panels uh, drawn, almost 115 characters created. So, uh, I mean, hundreds of terabytes of data. So it's, it, I mean, animated, uh, like we have so much of storage, like, you know, what, uh, that we have to, I mean, I never realized that. I, I would have focused more on storage and stuff in my education if I knew there was so much going to be there. That's right. Storage is so important, isn't it? You know, especially you get more and more uh, finer uh, details of thing in its more storage, as simple as that. So do you have your uh, run your own uh, server farm or do you use a cloud for uh, keeping all your storage now? Yeah. So uh, since the data is huge, we do have our internal uh, uh, so for a render, we have render farm wherein we render all the frames. So that needs a lot of computing. So we have more than almost uh, 200 uh, kind uh, blades that do the job of rendering the thing. So it's a pretty expensive process. With time, we every year we kind of keep adding to our render blades and stuff. And still, if we are short, we do it on the cloud, the rendering part. The storage part, pretty much we store it internally and we create two backups and uh, if you do it on the cloud, it is not going to be, uh, I think uploading and downloading process itself will be crazy uh, because we, the kind of, we are producing almost one terabyte of data every day. So it becomes a little crazy for us to do that, but uh, we do have some backups and all put on the cloud and stuff. Okay. So moving on to something last part of my presentation, so what is happening beyond CGI, beyond 2D animation, there is also different techniques. And one of them is motion capture. Basically, uh, you capture the character's movement, the actor's movement, and you apply that to uh, apply that to basically an animated character or to actually a CGI character. In this case, one of the on the right side you see is from Planet of the Apes. So later on, these characters are replaced with apes and uh, the motion ca uh, capture of act actors is applied onto those animals. And uh, so today, uh, I mean, 
based on what sort of movie uh, or for who which audience you're making motion capture is also an option and it was invented more created to make it the process faster but it is equally time consuming and equally difficult to uh, because there's so much data that you collect with movements and stuff you still need to figure out to have the understanding where to apply what and stuff so you uh, so may, uh, many times uh, you actually use uh, uh, the same data you uh, can be applied to different characters so uh, that you, so example a crowd is walking you can actually record 3 4 walk different type and animate it to uh, uh, to 2000 people in uh, Uh, apply that to 2000 people and then they will all walk so that's how usually crowd simulations and all are done and uh, uh, i was talking about also uh, motion capture as well as green chroma uh, keying so many times nowadays uh, people are shooting inside a set when you don't want to i mean in case of uh, corona times like this the perfect thing to do is shoot in a chroma uh, chroma in the sense is a color key basically usually you shoot against a solid a uh, color which could be usually preferred color is green or blue and uh, so you shoot and you can key it out later and then you can actually add anything to your background so your background in this case can be removed and can be a set uh, so it can be paris it can be new york or whatever else you can do i'll play one more clip here so this is one of the songs that we did as promotion for promotions for our uh, movie so in this you will see some shots where we have shot so this is a pop star called the lair mandi and some of you may know and uh, so we shot him in green screen and he's with bunch of uh, kids and uh, so, and then later on the set background is added so this place in the end of the movie at the end of the movie and then in this case the dance moves and all what you're seeing are actually motion capture done by these kids we have applied to chota beam and other characters and stuff so there was a lot of fun when we uh, we uh, shot this and you know it's fun to keep on you can change the background to whatever you desire uh, you can you can make it look you know jazzy or so whatever you want so it looks like this on the set and then you can change it and this is something that is happening and uh, uh, and today what is the change in technology especially in this last one year everybody got a lot of time so everybody started experimenting including our company so today the game engines basically are being used to like you heard about earlier rendering and the process it's pretty complicated and now the game engines are actually making it simpler so unreal has become extremely popular in one in the last year i think you some of you guys who play fortnite uh, fortnite know uh, you should know that it's made on unreal and uh, game engine so basically so it's it's real time everything is real time and it's much faster and uh, much advanced technology and now uh, in during the lockdown we all started experimenting to use this technology into our shows so that your rendering typically when we render about 1 uh, minute of animation it takes about a day uh, if in 200 machines but when it's using a game engine one minute can be done in like about an hours time it's pretty wow. much real time mm. in pre- pretty much real time if you're just playing it but you're going to export it and stuff it basically almost uh, i mean almost like 10 minutes or so to output that kind of thing uh, and then this is basically the future and i think this as the game engines evolve they're going to see a lot of this being used in animation as well and uh, uh, so one of the new things that been hap- i mean some of you have seen mandalorian so what, some of the new things that have used they have used the game engines uh, then they created this backgrounds in uh, in cgi and then they played it on an led screen which is basically uh, like earlier in earlier cinemas also they used to play on a screen project so it's kind of like a projector and then you are you shoot it on camera and your work is done you the, the you don't have there is no post production so you you do whatever i see, I see. there's no post production very interesting wow mm-hmm. i mean there is still a bit and stuff yeah, but sure. mm-hmm. you do a lot of your visualization so the actors know actually what exactly happening what is the environment 
I mean, a great actor doesn't need this still, but there are a uh, lot of poor actors out there who need, if they have in a better environment, you know what you're seeing, you actually see whatever your environment is and then your shoot is completed faster. So example, if this is a series where you're creating uh, you, uh, uh, a longer series, you're creating a lot of uh, these sets already, then you, you save a lot of time in the long run. Initially, yes, you have to spend three to six months in, uh, in creating these sets, but once it's done, I mean, you just, it's fast forward. Okay. So, I mean, for, for me, for today, I mean, in interest of time, this is yeah. where. Great. This I, is fantastic. Okay. So we'll go to some questions and I'll ask uh, uh, a couple of questions to get started. You know, so first is that, uh, you know, you have artists in your company and then you obviously also have people with different technical background. I mean, what sort of makeup of the people that you look for in your company? So, and what sort of background and where it comes from? So uh, there are, so we have pretty much from programmers to IT guys mm -hmm. to pure artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually an artist that we hire who knows how to draw is usually a bachelor of fine arts, has fine arts background. And sometimes they don't even have a degree, but they know how to draw and we can train them. So that is something that creative field, we don't need any uh, any education or anything because you you basically, you're either talented or you're not. And then you can always easily train the talented artist. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when it comes to the 3D part of thing, the CGI part of thing, then we expect some kind of uh, knowledge. You know, they have to have some uh, technology, idea of technology, have understanding of usage of computer, get a themselves a multimedia degree or class or specialization before we take them. Uh, so the, we expect in that case, some kind of a degree and st uh, stuff like that. Uh, but then as it goes, simulations and stuff, it starts getting complicated, but uh, typical, uh, in our company, you know, about 80% are artists. Mm -hmm. Rest okay. percent is split between management, uh, HR, accounts, uh, uh, technical guys. So technical guys usually are like about 5% of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they help speed up uh, the process. They are there live on the uh, on the floor. They write code as and when. Uh, you, we use Python in Maya to make sure that something is not working, there is some issues, we fix on the site with some kind of plugins written and importing into the scenes. So we have all kinds of uh, guys, but this is a typical uh, thing. So we have from highly educated people to people who have sometimes not even been to the school. Right, right. Artists are everywhere, you know, if you find them. Uh, there's a question here in the chat, let me read it to you. How can we start our journey in animation? Please tell us the path for a beginner. Where do you start, I guess? <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I was also beginner some 20, 25 years ago. So I was also figuring same stage. So the best way is, I think as a first step to learn about animation, et cetera, on the internet. And, you know, today so many, uh, so many things show you what it is, but you still love it. I think that's next step. You should go and uh, uh, find a university or a school that can uh, teach you based on your location you are. Uh, uh, go to the right school to learn animation or arts and stuff. So based on, again, what interests you have. Example, if you have extremely good drawing uh, school, then I think fine arts would be a good way to get started and stuff. But if you have, uh, you're looking you have interest and passion, and but you're uh, uh, you you're more of uh, uh, what do you call? It? You have a different kind of skill set, like you're great with colors or some background painting or anything like. To slightly take a different path. So depending on uh, depending on your skill set, I would suggest to do some courses and stuff. Ideally, to start with, it's good to do a short term course take a one week class or online class, you know, somebody's talking about animation, understand if this is something that you like, because mm -hmm. it is, uh, it is not an easy field to be in. Mm -hmm. It is a tough field. And uh, you, I mean, you are, as an artist, you're expected to know 
from everything to everything from anatomy to physics mm -hmm. uh, to geography right, right. and the everything. character right yeah very important right mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and you have to be a constant learner. So it's not yep. an easy field to leave. You have to have be passionate. That's, about. that's a very important point you make. You have to be a constant learner. It's not that this is the end of it. And the other question is that do you have to be an artist to sort of uh, drawing is a necessity to be in an in animation, or uh, or uh, you know or the knowledge of digital drawing is good enough for animators. So it's a question from a. I presume you have different people of different talent there for different purpose, so. Yes, absolutely. For example, I do not know any drawing. I mean, I can draw, but I'm horrible at it. Okay. Uh, but I, I mean, I realized that only when I went to and sat among great artists, then I realized that I better stop drawing because I realized how, how bad, but yeah, drawing is not the base for being an artist. You, you could have different uh, you can be a great writer and still be an artist. You could be playing a musical instrument, be an artist. You can be uh, uh, you can be great with colors, or you can understand storytelling. You're still an artist. Uh, uh, you, you know there are many great writers, but they're very good. Very few storytellers. Mm -hmm. So you see so many movies coming today. Not many story uh, stories that can actually hold you. There are few some storytellers who will just blow you away, and that's what. So, so you can be contribute to uh, to the process of animation in many different ways, and right. okay. uh, I think each one of us is creative in our own way. So we just need to find right. Mm -hmm. We like it. Okay, there are a couple of questions that uh, people want to ask directly. So, uh, Udipana, you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, Rajiv. Udipana this side. So. Uh, I want to ask something, as we all know that uh, like cartoons play a very important role in terms of learning language, right? Uh, any child can learn a language by watching cartoon. Now, my question is, uh, do you have any plan uh, to come up with a vernacular language uh, cartoon channel or uh, some uh, cartoon uh, events? I mean, uh, like Chota Beam. Like why I'm asking this, I know a few organizations in India are working on uh, this, like they want to come up with a vernacular cartoon channel. So do you have any plan as such? Over to you, Rajiv. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, uh, so usually, uh, when example in India, we have so much diverse languages. So there's so many languages. So what we usually do is we make it in a particular language. So in the case of Chota Beam, we make it in Hindi first. And then based on the interest of the people and stuff, we dub it into different languages. So, uh, so example, Telugu, Malayalam, uh, Tamil, uh, Bengali. So we dub it into various languages and we try to... Uh, kind of address that audience in uh, in uh, uh, this thing and so, so there have been some requests to you know kind of uh, for different languages but as you know uh, the uh, we are uh, creating content but the main broadcasters like cartoon network or disney and these guys decide actually what language this should play out the advantage of animation is that you can dub it into any language in the world and uh, it works and then uh, definitely sure. kids kids do pick up language watching animated shows uh, so i think that's great thing uh, a lot of kids channels have recently come up including in telugu and tamil language and there i hear a few coming in oriya and bengali language as well so uh, so that will uh, keep happening and then of course there is also digital platforms like youtube where you can actually produce in whatever language uh, this thing uh, uh, so basically, language-wise, is as far as our ambitions go. I think we're pretty happy being content creators and being a studio and stuff. Then look at opening our own channel. But at some point, yeah, definitely we'll look at having our own OTT platform or something like that and do more for kids and reach out to kids more directly. I hope I answered your question. Yes, Raj. Good to hear. You. Thank you. Uh, let me see if I'm seeing uh, any other questions. So uh, I have a, another question I'm kind of thinking about is that, you know, 
what are your challenges actually going forward besides you know you know growing as a company but what sort of challenges you see from a technology perspective or storytelling perspective i think uh, i mean the challenge is usually very typical to what happens to all companies in the sense one we have to keep innovating that's one of the uh, important things that we need to do being part of the creative fraternity i mean if you're coming up with the same, sometimes you know people come up with the same or similar ideas so the challenge is definitely how do you come up with ideas that are very different from you know each other uh, so uh, so that is something not easy uh, and then which means then uh, usually one person tends to have five six different types of idea and beyond that is explored so the writers example when they are writing the show after a while they have very similar ideas so we keep changing writers uh, so that is one challenge that we have in terms of creativity and innovation in terms of technology that is it's very very it's changing very quickly and we have to keep uh, upgrading ourselves to newer softwares learning them Uh, every year there is something new a new plugin or new something a shorter way of doing something which is taken thing uh, many times we are so used to doing things in a certain fashion that we don't want to reinvent ourselves i mean that is one challenge we have and artists do have a, a bigger problem in trying to upgrade example a new version of software has come they don't prefer to upgrade so it becomes a lot of convincing we have to do in internally hey you know this is something new you have to try so we kind of have to uh, keep motivating them to do that so um, th- these are of course major challenges that we have uh, but of course uh, a lot of co- competition i mean after corona i mean the, the everywhere uh, the prices has come down you know no i mean nobody wants to pay uh, the same price they were paying before so they bring down the prices Mm-hmm. then we are figuring out how do you do the same thing for a lesser price that's right which, mm-hmm. and nobody likes to say i can't go to my artist say you're going to take 20% lesser this year no right. one will take nobody mm-hmm. would like that mm-hmm. but then the challenge is how do you do the same thing in uh, same quality for a cheaper price so like that every year we come up with new challenges and stuff yeah, of course and mm-hmm. we hope that we can handle all of them Uh, uh, one more question. Let's say I'm a writer and a budding writer. I mean, you know, and I really want to write stories, story, storyline for one of your shows. How do I approach and go about contacting your company? You know, so um, I mean, what? How do you? Or is there a way? Is, you have a channel for getting writers in? Right? Yeah. So uh, we have a website, and of course, we are on Facebook. we are on instagram we are on other platforms as well uh, so uh, so their email addresses on so what we take seriously is whatever we get through our website so there is mm-hmm. mm-hmm. contact at greengold.tv or sales at greengold or hr at greengold.tv so any of these mediums they can reach out to us and uh, they can write and of course our number landline number Uh, of the offices uh, the main office the reception is uh, displayed in the thing so people who have questions can ask so they can get that uh, the right person they can write to for example if somebody is looking for writer so they can uh, call up uh, our office and ask to be connected with that department so they will connect and then they can apply online or email and uh, or even talk on phone okay uh, so there are many ways to reach out to us and we are very accessible and of course our op- i mean if they are based in hyderabad then they can just walk into our office and uh, do that yeah. okay uh, let's say we got couple of more question don't want to hold you up for too long one was that let me read this from the chat how much more or less labor intensive is cgi technology vis-a-vis regular cartoon that we have seen earlier as in tom and jerry for idea if a storyboard storytelling visualization seems similar yeah uh, so typically the the 2d process is faster and i mean and then it stays fresh longer so example tom and jerry that is created in 
70s 80s or 90s mm-hmm. from today you cannot tell that it was made in 90s because those are uh, i mean th- those are colored and it is uh, it is kind of 2d animation has come to a standard and from there uh, it cannot grow further but mm-hmm. then if you go to cgi animation what you see it is a much more expensive and elaborate process compared to 2d uh it is got a lesser lifestyle so uh, i mean life uh, lifespan so if an animation show done in 2d can last for 50 years cgi probably is about 10 to 15 years as of now and then suddenly it appears outdated mm-hmm. um uh, so example something that is done in 2000 and something that is done in two, uh, 2020 you can see that the technology has come so way forward just like you see of uh, pictures that you shot in 2000 yeah i mean we mm-hmm. we can't even hardly see ourselves mm-hmm. but now the one that you're shooting in a average phone you can see yourself nice and handsome and stuff like that so so technology has come that that way long cgi of course much more like i mentioned typical 2d episode takes about 3 months mm-hmm. cgi 4 months cgi uh, is more complex cgi is more expensive you need more people more infrastructure whereas and more software the process but 2d you don't need uh, that much of uh, this thing but the initial creation part the pre production part is the same for both of them okay okay well one other question i see can graphic designers also start in animation absolutely in fact the first uh, the first when we i came to india and started there were no animation or animators in india so i found graphic designers mm-hmm. and we trained them in software i mean graphic designers are ah khul gaya ah khul gaya dil mein dusre pita akele hai to sir hai ah khul gaya khul gaya na tum dekhe utha ke yeah so graphic designers are actually pretty uh, pretty skilled people and they are they are the ones best suited to learn animation mhm okay very good i think we have uh, kind of come to almost to the end of it i don't see any other questions and i'm going to uh, approach you later for rajiv to probably create couple of animation character from assam is a uh, legend so i will come to you for <laughs> that request at another time and uh, uh, do you have any parting uh, comments before we close it off today uh well i mean i really enjoyed talking and i hope i have uh, i have inspired someone to take up the field of animation so i hope they will uh, follow the path of creation you know and create some great show some day and yeah and talking about assamese stuff we've been in fact we've been trying to uh, create some shows from that region especially uh, there are a lot of great stories in that part of india and uh, uh, we have in fact working on one and we've been pitching to networks mm-hmm. based on a character called as uh, tiger princess So we mm-hmm. hope that works. 